Hi, uh, this week uh, in my watercolour shorts uh, I'd like to sort of present you um, with a demonstration uh, showing you how I go about uh, this sort of coastal scene. My name is Howard Jones and uh, welcome to my channel if you haven't already visited before. Um, please do subscribe to my channel, it really helps. Um, if you really like these videos or if you like this video by the end of it um, perhaps um, you'd be so kind to share um, my video with others it helps uh, more subscribers for me and uh, helps me to sort of keep doing these uh, these weekly classes okay so I'm going to start as a, um, with a very loose sketch um, this is the coastline of the Isle of Skye off the west coast of Scotland in the UK. So I'm going to try and keep the um, actual drawing to an absolute minimum and um, let's see how we get on here. So I'll just have that to hand. I have a headland up here. My aim is to do these as quickly. Um, the reason why I paint quicker, the reason why I do regular um, quick paintings is to keep um, my paintings looking fresh. Um, if after a while, I don't know whether everybody else um, suffers the same sort of thing, but uh, I've heard other people say that they do. Um, after a while, uh, despite having achieved a, a sort of uh, a modicum of uh, success in uh, painting in the loose style, there is always um, lurking in the background um, this sort of uh, this sort of trap that you fall into and you slip back into tight style. So my remedy is simple. I s this is this is an example of how I go about fixing that. So I just got a slither of land back there, and I'm going to go straight in with my paint now. Um, just get something down very loosely to start off with. I want to cover the, the paper rather rapidly. So I'll use... Um, I'll use... this uh, hog type hairbrush and um, just start with something get that sort of greyish blue sky in the background there so I'm just picking up a little bit of indigo and if I get that in up here but immediately hit it with plenty of water so indigo always looks very strong when it first goes on but it does dry out incredibly light uh, much lighter than you you sort of expect it to just pick up a little bit of warm colour now, just a small amount of burnt sienna. So keep it all nice and fresh, keep it flowing. I'm just quite happy to sort of flood that sky up there and I'll lift out quickest way to get um, any sort of suggestion of cloud is just to lift off. So mainly lifting off the bigger shapes and the bigger cloud areas. Okay, that should do us, I think, for the sky. Um, it makes sense to sort of put um, exactly the same colour in, in the uh, sea. So this is my sea territory. And I'll warm it up about here, just as I did with the sky as it's moving towards us a little bit, just go in there with some very weak burnt sienna. And we'll, we'll leave that dry brush technique there. That, that's a case of just scrubbing hard into the surface with not too much water and paint in the brush. Gives you that broken delivery. So let's now move towards the land mass. And I've got an old school brush here, really cheap. Um, uh, a school a brush. I'm not sure what the fibre is. It do know it's natural. Um, so let's pick up some 
lemon yellow, which I've simply added straight to the indigo blue that I placed in my mixing palette. But we'll also add some raw sienna to that. And a little bit more indigo. And uh, we'll go into this area here. So we make a delivery, just make a delivery like this. Get roughly the shape that I want. But now that I've made that delivery, I'll start changing the colour in here. So I'll go back again with some indigo. It's a very dark area here. And just let things, allow things to do what they do best. To let them do their own thing up there. I've sort of, that sky in areas is still, is still wet. So this being sort of Scotland with rapidly changing weather conditions, um, I'm quite happy for paint to diffuse, to, to, to uh, drift. The, the colours I just put in this mountain it will drift in some areas into the sky. That's good. That, Gives, provides a bit of atmosphere. Just picking up a bit of cerulean blue now for this more distant area of land back there. There is a little bit of that green and indigo in that mix. So just being careful to keep an eye on what that previous mix is doing here. But there is a sense that um, there's a darker area up at, up at this upper in the upper territory. So really want to show off something a bit lighter and more green, uh, a brighter green in fact, about here, some, something like that. So I'm sort of, there's a certain amount of pushing of colour here, that is to say that the colour isn't quite as greyed down as it is in the photo. I'm pushing my colour. Uh, by that, what I mean is um, the colour's just a little uh, closer to... Uh, it's more naturally saturated. In other words, it's closer to the colour it is when it comes out directly out of the tube. It's uh, a higher saturation, higher chroma, um, just a bit brighter. It takes it off that grey, away from that grey. Now, sometimes I'll put in... Um, what, I, what I refer to as the opposite number here. So uh, when you've got greens like this, I'll just pop in, this is a little bit of alizarin crimson. So red into green, just to make them look a little more natural, like this. And then, now that I've got that in place, I'm quite happy with that. Um, we'll move into this territory here. So I've sort of divided this up in terms of proximity and distance, if you like, um, starting mostly with the furthest areas, this one and the and the most distant back there, doing those at the same time. That way I can uh, control, I have a better idea of controlling how to control the colours uh, and, and, and tonal values um, back there much better. So that it needs just a little bit more of extra darkness, a little bit of, uh, I, that time I used a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So now I'm sort of thinking of this slightly closer territory here. And over the top I can see, I can just pick out from the, from the photo, a slightly brighter green line, just sort of, it just delineates the top of that surface just about there. So I'm, I'm using lemon yellow up there. Uh, and I'll scrub that into this nearer area as well. There's lemon yellow, this time lemon yellow and raw sienna, just to get that nice, clean sort of, very sort of dried grass sort of look here. And I'm quite happy here to paint uh, dry, uh, allow, although this brush was fully loaded with water and paint, the fact that the, the paper is itself very dry, it allows me to uh, scumble over the area and, the, and I know that the paint will break up in this, in this fashion, just like we did on the water. So I'm just making sure sort of happy. So now I've got some warmth in here. Again, all I'm using here so far is the um, is this really old 
cheap brush that I found in a bargain basket in a local art supplies. And I'm just going to darken out now and get some shape in these nearer territories. So I put the warmth in first and now I'm going to follow the warmth with some dark cools. I'm picking up ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. We'll have a little bit of uh, thalo green. A bit more burnt sienna, a bit more ultramarine blue. There, and I've got a sort of dark olive sort of colour here. And that can go in... I'm glancing up at my photo all the time, so I'm, I'm so I put all the warmth, the warm areas in. Now I'm looking at the how the darks delineate, and they seem to sort of create edges around these warm shapes. So deliver the paint like this. Create that little rocky outcrop as it goes into the sea back there. There's a couple of others that seem to do something similar. There's also a nice dark line on the distant bank. Which you can place like that. And then there's this, this bit of cerulean blue through here. Just to cool off this gap that I've got between these two uh, sort of uh, what you call them, sort of platforms of, of grass, little leveled out areas of surface area and in between there's, there, there are these sort of cool slightly darker recesses. Okay so Now I need to dry brush. I've got a lot of this. This the uh, edge, the shoreline here is um, sort of grey browns, and but it's broken up. So in other words, what I'll do again is is move swiftly over the surface, mixing up cerulean blue and um, and burnt sienna. And if I scrub, just take a little bit of that paint off there like that. And if I just scrub rapidly over the surface I get that sort of effect that I'm, I'm looking for sort of broken just where the seaweed and the rocks meet the water there we are and I'll speed dry this now just use my fingernail to infer a couple of individual uh, platforms of rock catching the light here just in this sort of territory. Now that that's dry, um, I'm just going to go back into there. Ultramarine blue, mostly ultramarine blue here. Little bit of burnt sienna. What I'll do is now I'll just take that area into the tonal territory, the tonal value that I think is probably closer to what I see in the photograph here. I'll cut above that because it actually does go up so that'll allow me to paint over the, a little bit too much drifting maybe up there something like that. So that works well. So by not panicking you can often find that um, things will actually help you when you get there. If I, otherwise, if it, you know, I could have tried to fix that drifting if it went too far at the time of it happening, but I didn't um, because there's always, you, well, there's usually, I should say, um, something you can do uh, other than, you know, start fiddling with it. If you just be a bit patient and tackle it a little bit later down the road, further down the road. There we are. I think. Um, might need some warming up, so I'm just going to, there's an area here that's a bit warmer than I've got it, so I'm just going to use some raw sienna into there. So I'm using my usual delivery, 
distribution. And it's, ba it's basically the only way I work these days. That I, I just see a large shape, a large area, and I deliver paint, roughly speaking, as to where I want it, uh, where I, I place it where I know that I can maneuver it, I can move it about. I just go a little bit darker in the immediate foreground, just to make things, just to give things a sense, slight, a better sense of depth here. There we are, and I think that's a finished job. That was about ten, um, probably close to 15 minutes, I suppose. Uh, I call them the 10 minute quickies, but um, you know, just allowing things for things to dry, um, you have to add perhaps just a couple more minutes in. Just a little bit more ripple in places here. And we'll put the mount around this and see what it looks like. There we are. And I, it's amazing. It really does, um, f you know, help you to free up. It's because it's all in the, in, in the mind. It's all in the head. The um, tightness comes from worrying about making a mistake. It's about being precious. Um, and if you, um, I mean, I set a little timer. Um, that sounds like, as, you know, it might make more, pr more pressure on you, but it doesn't. Um, I, I know that we're we're all slightly different, and if that doesn't work for you, don't use a timer. But do try to be mindful of um, of how quickly you're painting, uh, because as I say, it, it's I know for the, the next time I sit down to do uh, let's say a longer session, um, then that will um, it'll it'll just help me paint at the a comfortably rapid speed you know which is what really helps in terms of um, keeping keeping your work open and fresh and uh, and loose there we are folks hope you enjoyed this as I say do please uh, subscribe if you haven't already uh, and if you want immediate notifications as and when my uh, new um, tutorials uh, become available on my channel then just click on the bell icon um, or do nip over to my website if you want more information. I actually run live Zoom classes. Um, I run two a month. They're the first two Wednesdays of every uh, month. And um, uh, they are at the moment um, set for UK times. But um, for our friends in America, um, please drop me a comment. Um, I know there are different time zones within uh, the USA, so perhaps you could leave me comments if you would like to attend uh, one of my live classes. Um, we can, um, I can therefore pitch my time of day um, accordingly. So um, enjoy your painting. Good luck. See you at the next one.